Iron Deficiency Anemia, Prof. Roofs. If you have questions, contact me at profroofs.com or profroofs at gmail.com. This video I'm specifically making for a Khan Academy competition in order to make Netflix RN videos. So if this video helps you, make sure you like it, share it, and comment on it. The format they ask is to start off with what is the disease, signs, symptoms, diagnosis, and prevention, followed by the pathophys and a treatment. However, I'm going to rearrange this a little bit, and I'm going to start off with the pathophysiology. Why am I going to do that? Because physiology, anatomy is structure, so physiology is what? Physiology is function, how something works. Path refers to disease. So think about if you have a car and the car is not working. It could be for many reasons, but if you understand how the car works, and then I tell you, let's say there's no gas, then you'll understand you know, the signs of symptoms of why it's not working is because there's no gas, which can lead to your diagnosis. Let's just fill it with gas or prevention and treatment, etc. Iron deficiency anemia. What is the chemical symbol for iron? It is F-E. Iron can exist in what? It can exist in the 2 plus or the 3 plus state. So that's iron. Deficiency, does that mean a lot or a little? It means we have a little bit of it. Anemia, when you see the word A, like A vascular, A means with or without something. A means without something. Nemia coming from heme, meaning the Greek word for blood. So let's discuss blood for a moment. You go to the doctor, they call them the vampires, and they stick you right in the arm and they take your blood. Now what do they do with that blood? Well, they take that blood, they put it in this machine. What is that machine? That machine is a centrifuge and they spin the blood. It's going to separate the blood based on different densities, the different components. Up on the top here, you have that fluid component. What is that fluid component? It's called plasma. It's about 55% of your blood and it has proteins and antibodies. Below that here we have the white buffy coat, that little area which is about 1% and that's going to have your WBCs. What's W? It's white blood cells. And what are the ones that stop bleeding? Those are going to be your platelets. And then about 45% below that, the most dense portion, is the part we're going to be focusing on due to the color what's in there. It's going to be your RBCs, your red blood cells. Another name for red blood cells is what? Erythro, meaning red, and sites, meaning cells. And white blood cells would be what sites? Would be leukocytes. So we're going to be focusing on these RBCs, these erythrocytes. Let's take a moment and focus on this word anemia without blood. Anemia can be classified in several ways. One is to classify it based on the different sizes of the cell. So micro, is that large or small? Micro is going to mean small. Cytic, again, what does that refer to? Cell. We're saying we have a small cell. So micro is small. What's the word for large? That is going to be macro. So we're saying the cell is large. So let's say this is a small one, and let's say this is a large red blood cell. And in between, we're going to have something normal. So it would be normal cytic, a size that's in between there. They measure it with a unit called MCV, M for mean corpuscular volume. And the units they use, they say 80 to, see that's an 8 right there, to 100 is about normal. Greater than 100 is large, and less than 80 is small. Iron deficiency anemia is going to fall under here. There's lots of different types. That would be another video. But like important macro would be like B12 or also folate deficiency, which becomes very important with pregnancy. Okay, so let's continue focusing on iron deficiency anemia, and we'll see why it's microcytic. Here is a red blood cell. And in the red blood cell, there is an important component. What is that important component? It starts with an H, and it fills the red blood cell in there. That important component is, yes, hemoglobin. So we're going to divide this word hemoglobin. Globin refers to the protein that's inside. And you can see four portions here. You see this type of purple or whatever color, and this is another color, and I guess this is tan, and I don't know, this is brown. Anyways, there's four portions to hemoglobin. And what is heme? Heme is composed of 
Iron, if you look, how many iron molecules do you see in this hemoglobin? One, two, three, four. So there's iron as well, too. But heme is not just made of iron. Heme is also made of another component. If you look around each iron, there's this rectangle here, and that rectangle is symbolized much larger over here. So here's the iron again in the center like you see here, and then you see this big, large structure around it. That big, large structure is called protoporphyrin, and it's written for you right over here. So protoporphyrin plus iron makes up heme. Specifically here, that's number nine because there's different types as well. When you're deficient in protoporphyrin, it's sideroblastic anemia, a different type in a different video. So we'll be focusing here on the iron. Hemoglobin, one more time, let's divide this. It's composed of what two portions, the heme? It's composed of iron and the protoporphyrin. Globin is just the protein. So what are the causes here of iron deficiency anemia? I'm gonna put it into four categories. We're gonna say number one is blood loss. Why? blood loss because imagine here is your blood vessel and here are your RBCs and then all of a sudden let's say there's a cut in the blood vessel and RBCs start to leak out well what's in the RBCs is hemoglobin so basically you're losing hemoglobin hemoglobin abbreviated HB not HG what is HG HG is mercury don't confuse that I see people do it so you're losing hemoglobin so if you're losing hemoglobin of course you're losing iron so blood loss is one reason. Different ways that they can occur, well, with females, this is the female sign. What's gonna happen to a female every month for blood loss? Yes, we can have heavy menstrual periods. And by we, I'm not including myself. And also we can have colon cancer. And a big one for males is peptic oh, ulcer disease. A lot of times due to alcoholism. All right, so that's blood loss, dealing with the whole hemoglobin. We're losing the whole thing. The other three, which I'm going to put here, are dealing with just losing iron di directly. So number two and three, these are going to deal with input problems, such as you're not eating enough of it in your diet or you're not absorbing enough of it. Number four over here is going to be a type of output problem, which means you're increasing the use of it. You're using it. There's a high demand. So why would you have a poor diet? Well, maybe because you're poor. You don't have the money to buy the proper foods. Another reason might be because you're a vegetarian. And we'll get into this more in prevention and treatment. Absorption. If kids are less than one year old and they're drinking a lot of cow milk, what happens is the iron binds to the milk and it doesn't absorb well. So that's not good for kids less than one year old. Also, lead poisoning could be a problem. For instance, if kids are eating the chipped paint. Another problem is a gastric bypass because to absorb iron, you need acid. And just on a side note, Fe2 plus is how you absorb it. You can take the two and remember, you absorb it into your blood better in Fe2 plus state. And this will be very important with prevention and treatment as well. Increase in use. Infants, when they are developing, use up a lot of iron. They use most of it in the first four to six months of their development, most of their stored iron when they're born. Or if they're premature, because the last trimester is when most of the iron is absorbed by the fetus. Trimester. Also, pregnancy. Almost one in every two, every other woman who comes in pregnant has iron deficiency anemia because you're now developing for two, not just one. Histologically, we'll look at a normal red blood cell versus a microcytic hypochromic. It has less hemoglobin. As you notice, there's no hemoglobin on the inside. Without hemoglobin, you're not going to have the red color, so it's going to be a pale white color that you can observe here. Hypo meaning less, chromic meaning color, as opposed to the normal red blood cell. There's more color, even though it's a little white. And microbe, it's going to be small because the red blood cell is going to keep dividing and dividing and getting smaller and smaller in order to keep the ratio of hemoglobin to the red blood cell size even.